One of the most important aspects of any local church ministry is walking with people towards greater maturity in their own personal relationship with Jesus. In other words, kind of what we talk about when it comes to discipleship. How are we helping people mature in what it means to be a follower of Jesus? Not just from a title perspective, but honestly a minute-by-minute, day-by-day relationship that they have with Jesus. We refer to this as the pathway to maturity. In other words, it is more helpful for us to have a process and a structure that actually helps move people forward in their walk with Jesus. Even though this is one of those most important aspects for a local church to actually be a part part of doing, it oftentimes is is forgotten or neglected because of the whirlwind of the urgency, the the tyranny of the urgent that lies before most pastors and most church leaders. So the big idea that I want to take time and explore is, is really how do we answer this question? How are you answering this question in your local setting? And it's simply this, how are we leading people to mature in their walk with God? Um, And again, you want to build a process, you want to build a structure, have the system in place that makes this more automatic in the way that the church functions, even creating similar language that the church can begin to understand. Um, It really, to have a strong pathway towards maturity, there are four key aspects that I believe need to be a part of that Um, in in the way that we program, the way that uh, we, we talk, and they center around these four key words, engaged, established, equipped, and empowered. Let me explain what those are. Um, First of all, part of the maturing process begins in how we honestly engage with God. And so we want to have a process where we're engaging our people to relationally engage in their own personal journey of maturing with Jesus. And this is where we talk about and we we disciple people in the power of the word. We, We teach them how to pray. We expose them to missional opportunities. But it's not just about how we personally engage with God. It's also how do we engage with God corporately. And so this is where you you explain the importance of even just being here on a regular basis when it comes to church functions, when it comes to the gathering of the saints, he uses the Hebrew author talks about. Um, And so we need to challenge people because Jesus reminded us that the most important thing is what? It's how we love God and how we love people. And so maturity is begins to be defined simply with that. How are we actually doing personally in engaging God? How am I doing personally when it comes to engaging other people as well along that journey? And so the, the, the pathway towards maturity begins with engagement. What are you doing in your local church to help people engage God and engage people corporately when it comes to worship and exploring the truths and the depths of biblical Christianity? The second is we hope people get established. In other words, it's not just something that they do. They come and they tend whenever they feel like it, but we want people to be established in godly relationships where they're not doing life by themselves. I don't know about you, but I know for me and oftentimes those that I watch, some of my greatest moments of growing in my faith have happened because of what other people around me have said or done and how they've encouraged me, prayed for me in certain seasons of my life. Most of that happens in moments of crisis. And so the question is, who is going to be with you in the midst of crisis to help you continue to move forward? Because crisis is something we all face. And we face it in bigger ways and we face it in smaller ways. But this is why we need to be established in godly, faith-based community. So what steps are you do you have in place to move people from being just engaged on the weekend to actually moving towards being established in godly relationships. The third aspect of the maturity pathway is equipping. It's how are we actually equipping people to carry out the mission and the ministry that God has ordained them to do. And so the equipping aspects is beginning to help people understand how they're wired, how they're gifted, how God seems to be using them and encouraging them in how they actually go about using that gift set and that gift mix. And so we move people, we start with the engagement, we move towards established, and then once they begin to be established in that godly community where they've got a group of people that are going to be encouraged, it's now about equipping them towards the mission 
um, explaining the mission of God and what God is about and how we all are part of that workmanship. He's created us to be a part of what he is doing here in this present moment, even in the future, here locally, regionally, and abroad, and helping people explore what that may look like in their life. And then lastly, it's a level of empowerment. This is the go aspect. They've connected with God. They've connected with people. They're connected with how God has wired them, being equipped to actually use the gift mix that God has placed in them. And now there's this empowerment is how are we actually sending people out the door? Now, here's where I think oftentimes we may miss it in the local church. We're really good at talking about, hey, you need to be here on Sunday. Um, We're really good about talking about people needing to volunteer and to get into small groups. We're okay at helping people be equipped and understanding their gift mix. But oftentimes we stop when it comes to the sending aspect. If your discipleship pathway, if your pathway towards maturity doesn't include sending as a part of it, it is incomplete. Part of our, our, our hope, part of our prayer, part of what Paul has tried to inspire and motivate us towards in Ephesians chapter 4 is to equip people for works of service. There's an empowerment factor of allowing them to walk, allowing them to go. Maybe God is going to call them to go plant the next church. Maybe God is going to call them to do something spectacular in their workplace. Maybe God is going to call them to go to the far places of the earth and uh, to help establish a gospel community among an unreached people group. We don't know. But pastors, part of the maturing process is empowering people to go and understanding the risk that's going to be involved with that, but also be an encouragement to them. My, my, my encouragement to you is think through the processes of not only how are we engaging, how are we helping people get established, what are we doing to actually equip them, and how are we empowering people to actually be on mission. And then once you've kind of defined what those processes and how you're going to structure, then that's where bridge events begin to come in play. It's, it's how do we actually move people in the circle. So it's not just enough to talk about it, but how do we get them to take baby steps towards the next thing? So they're engaged. They're coming on a weekly basis. How do we get them established in community? What are the practical steps? Is it, hey, next thing you need to come to is a starting point. And that starting point, we're going to introduce small groups and small group leaders. And then we're going to have a registration process. And then our hope is out of that, they'll actually get established. And so think through what a bridge events are we actually putting in place to actually help people move in the cycle of what it means to grow and be a follower of Jesus.